All right, hello everyone. Good to see you. Paul Tranny here. I'm gonna dive into today's design masterclass. I like the design masterclass because it's kind of like a catch-all. It's everything design related. Uh, so this will be fun. Today we're gonna talk about animation as I adjust my mic. Sorry about that. It doesn't want to stay up. <laughs> All right. So welcome everyone. Good to have you here. Feel free to say hello in chat. Just want to make sure everything is working as you know and that you can hear me okay and that you can also hear the music which is playing right now cool all right i think we are good to go um yeah oh, tell me about it it's early for me carol says you're exactly right do i have coffee it's right here man help me all help me Okay, let's get this party started. I want to talk, and I also want to welcome you. Uh, Simon Shakespeare, awesome. Be creative in the house. Golden Rose, Michelle, Afroja, Tim, Mo Best, the one and only. Nicole Deliz, good to have you here as well. Broadcasting from beautiful uh, Denver where it snowed. So it snowed here in Colorado, so yeah, that happened. And uh, yeah, I gotta go shovel after this. So, uh, but right now, let's just go ahead and make some fun graphics, shall we? Let's make some fun graphics and then we're gonna animate them. So hopefully that matches your agenda for today. Uh, I usually, I just drink coffee uh, with milk. Uh, unless it's really good coffee, then I will take it black. Just depends on where I get it too. How about you guys? You guys like, how do you guys like your coffee? Mine just literally just has a little bit of creamer in it and it's delicious. It's actually peppermint coffee, which is really good. All right, let's do this. That is delicious and we're gonna rock it today. Starting out in Illustrator. So we're gonna go from Illustrator uh, to, let's see if I have it open. I also wanna show you Animate. So Illustrator to animate that's opening right now uh, we're gonna jump into photoshop as well as after effects so we have a number of apps that we're going to cover just so you know this happens a lot by the way this happens all the time with after effects if you have, especially if you change your resolution grab that lower corner and then if you hold down the option key you can you can change and this works for all the apps you can scale it down right from the center so you're like oh finally because that happens especially as you get into animation you're going to have a lot of panels right so that's what we're going to do we're going to start out in illustrator photoshop animate uh after effects but let's start out in here and let's just create something really fast um i am thinking this is what let's make this 200 by 200 let's just make this happen really fast 3d extrude and bevel uh, isometric left, 200, right? There we go. We'll go with something like this. I was thinking something like, since we're also in the midst of 36 days of type. Oh, this is taking way too long. Everything's running a little slow. Okay. Is, uh, and today I think is, uh, J. So I'm going to do a quick J just by duplicating a couple of these. Is it J or is it L? Actually, I think it's L. I apologize. Uh, yeah, J I already did a couple days ago. So today is L, but this is the just the subject matter that I'm gonna work with today. Uh, if we do go to the calendar, you'll see that uh, you can participate at any time, but it gives me a subject matter for today, the 16th of April, which is technically day 12. Don't let the calendar fool you. Let's move this over like that. There we go. I want to do just like an L letter, something like this. Bring to front. But I want it to kind of assemble itself now. Okay, so here we have this L. And how's everybody doing? What is up? Rick H, Papa Rick, as he's known amongst his friends, I assume. <laughs> General Kenobi, uh, Ezam, awesome. 
let's do this. Uh, let me know where you're from. Uh, Denver, Pennsylvania, Harry, awesome. So here's this L. So how you do this in typically in Illustrator, you do this a couple different ways. But uh, how you could do this is you take this and typically this is how we'll show it. We'll just select the art world tool. We can do a command C, command V, just like that a couple times. And we could have either have it split apart or come back together, right? So we'll just do like a couple frames. I kind of want to work backwards, to be honest with you. Let's do this. Let's take this. Let's have this disassemble. So this is going to go up. This one's going to go over, right? And all of this is just kind of going to disassemble like so. Make it happen. C, V, Option, Command, Zero will give me all of my artboards. So I can output all of these artboards as they start to move away, right? Uh, and then breeding them into Photoshop this way. So there we go. We're just gonna do this really fast because I wanna get into After Effects to be honest with you. If you wanna do a frame by frame animation this way, you totally can, right? We have four frames. Bom, bom, bom. Let's do uh, one more here in the end. Oops. Select your artboard tool, copy, paste. Oops. Yeah, copy, paste. Let's move this up. Right, and maybe it's just like off of, almost off of the pasteboard or the artboard like so. Last one, wait for it. Um, if this ever happens with the artboard, it's because you have this tool, move and copy. Yeah, don't, don't move those other items. Oops. <sighs> kind of do want to move those. Ugh. Wait for it. Let's move this up. I'm almost done, everybody. Not to worry. These go off that way. Let's, they all need a little bit more space. All right, we're done. We're done. Done with it. Move, move, move. All my artboards are done. Everything looks pretty good. And I'll just output all these frames. Uh, you've been doing all your letters in fresco. Oh, that's cool. Love. I think that's a good call. Export for screens. We're going to export out all of these to a particular folder. We'll just call this frames on my desktop. Boom, boom. Export artboard. We've been able to do this this way for ages now. Now let's go into Photoshop. Okay. I'm going to try to move through this as fast as possible. File. Open. In Photoshop is where we're going to do our animation. We'll go to desktop. We'll go to frames. Um, we'll select this first artboard right here. Let's hope this actually works, to be honest with you. Because <laughs> I wanted to, right in here, for your options, right? Click down here, options. It's hidden, but you want to bring things in that are an image sequence. So just make sure you have that checked. It will remember it. And then go up here and select your first one. It does go one. I'm a little bit concerned about this. So I might even, I might even change it just to make sure it works. Uh, you know what? You know what? We're going to learn. Let's learn. Okay, I knew that was gonna happen. Okay. I knew that was gonna happen. Uh, one dash zero, there we go. All right, I'm trying to move through this as fast as possible. Arsalan, how you doing? Uh, Melissa, Melissa Love, how are you? All right, let's just, uh, brother. And I broke it. I don't know why this, this one is not showing up. That is so weird. Here it 
There they all are. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Ah, it's driving me crazy. Why is it not? Anyways, I'm just going to bring it in anyways. So let's do this. Ah, so sorry, everyone. It's, okay, so now it's working just fine. When in doubt, just relaunch the menu. Select that first one. Image sequence. Open that up. We give it a frame rate. We could do 10 frames per second, right? There it is. Here it puts it in a video group automatically. We'll go to window, we'll go down to timeline, and now we have the timeline for that video group. So this is where everything's stashed away. Now we can see when we click play, sure enough we can see it kind of burst out. Really pretty easy to do. Does that make sense? From there we can go to export and we can go ahead and render this video, or we could even turn it into a frame by frame animation. So from there, desktop this is animation it's that easy 1080 by 1080 render ah all right okay so all that to say this is how you would do an animation if you wanted to do a frame by frame animation right you're talking about a character i think i saw somebody mention a character um Character is an instance where you could do it a couple different ways. You would probably use animate to do that, which again, still needs to open. But even before I get into that, I kind of want to finish up um, good old Photoshop. So, Let's do, let's do this. Go fast, Paul, hurry up. Man, so much to talk about. This is what I would do. There's an even better way. I'm like, you know what, this is all right. Let's start fresh right over here, okay? Let's start fresh. This is what I would do. Say, hey, you know what? Let's just do this in Illustrator. 1080 by say 1350, because we want to make this for Instagram. Here we are. We'll do a quick phrase, of course, using hot pink, because why not? Making a quick layout. Need another font, that's fun. All right, there we go. Doing this quickly. There we go, we got these three different versions. How's everybody doing? I'm t uh, M-E. Media Encoder does indeed support image sequences, so you're not limited to the Photoshop codex. Yes. Um, Although to get it into Media Encoder, you're either using After Effects, you're, you can't use Media Encoder with Photoshop, can you? That's, uh, that's my question. At least I know there's not a direct extension. Gener you know, export, Media Encoder is not in here. But we'll get to that in a second. Everything is acting a little funky. All right, boom. Okay, there we go. Uh, we have three layers, and then we, if we open up our timeline panel, we can see from scratch we can create a video timeline, which is what we created earlier. Right? We could also create a frame by frame animation, right? So you could do that same frame by frame look in Photoshop. But I'm going to create a video timeline. Sure enough, what do we have here? We have this, these three layers, right? If we twirl these down, 
Again, I don't know which one's which, but I do actually know the order. So like which love is which? Well, it's all, it's all laid out for you because as I select it, we can see that it changes over in my um, layers panel. So I know which one I'm moving around. So go right in here. This is typically what you do. So this is a five second animation. Not much is happening. We'll go halfway through right in here in the center. We'll click transform. We could also uh, click opacity, you know, any one of these, but these are your keyframes that you're adding, right? This is your gateway drug to After Effects. That's what I, that's what I say about Photoshop. It is like After Effects light in here, right? So now what we'll do is we'll take this first level, we'll push it off to the side, right? Uh, we'll take this bot, we'll take this bot, oh. Take this one, move it over this way. And uh, the center one, what we will do is we will have it fade in via opacity. Opacity, well, where's opacity? Right up here. We can take that down 50% just to make sure it's working. There it is. Sure enough, take it all the way down to zero. And there we have it. We'll click play. We have everything kind of slide in nice and slow. I get it. You're not that excited because it's not moving that fast. Right? Good morning, Jesus Ramirez. Jesus. Biola. Uh, so that's what we have going on. It's like pretty easy. You're gonna make a lame animation the longer it is. It's gonna be better if you make it much faster. So how do we control the pacing of all of this? It's all about these keyframes. Move them closer together, right? And now within the first 15 frames, roughly, they're gonna slide in, right? That's much better. Guess what? Same thing for this love right here. middle one, I'm thinking, you know what, for it, I actually do want that one to like maybe come up from the bottom or whatever, which is not a great idea. It doesn't really matter. Typically, this is what happens. You'll experiment. We'll have that one, maybe start over there. We'll make sure that's like that. Maybe we'll take this bottom one. Oh, that, I do have them mixed up a little bit. We'll have this one come up from the bottom. There we go. Okay, done, done, play. Everything slides in, does what we expect it to do. Easy enough, took the word L for love, 36 days of type, seems to make sense. Right in here, if we wanna reverse it, let's jump in here and let's see if this works. Cause I should just be able to click right in here. Bam, bam, adds those two additional keyframes. So it's gonna hold it that whole time, right? until it hits this point. And then actually what I wanna do is I wanna copy this keyframe, hopefully this works, paste it, ah, it does not. I have to copy it and then I don't even know. Add a new keyframe, right click, paste. So it's a little bit more lengthy, right? So copy, let's make sure we have these keyframes, bam, bam, scroll in. It needs keyframes just so I could have something selected and then paste. And let's just do this fly out. All right, cool. Let's move on to After Effects, can I? Do you guys mind? Because we did it. We did our animation. There we go. Boom. Stays there. Slides out. Really simple. Right. We will turn on loop playback. Okay. Loop playback is on. Can you take a drink of my coffee? Can you option drag a, a keyframe? We could try it. That's another way for, of me saying I don't know. <laughs> Option, drag. Nope. No. Ah! Oops. No no real shortcuts there. So some of the After Effects stuff, it just, it gets better from here. Because if I want to take something in After Effects, that's where the magic happens. So, 
yeah. I can always save this file. We'll just call this love. Why not? You guys feeling the love today? I'm feeling the cold. It snowed. What's that all about? What's up, Roz? Uh, you have transitions right here, so you can fade things out. So let's take... Uh, say, for instance, this top one, which happens to be the bottom one, which is thoroughly confusing. So I'm going to I moved this around. Now they're in order, which is so much better. But uh, basically, if I said, hey, you know what, for um, this top one right here, oh, hold on. This is the middle one. I'm going to move that down. This one is the top one. Okay, so for the top one, I can chop it right here. Boom, halfway through. Forget these keyframes, right? Just forget them, we don't need them. Click right here. Let's go ahead and add a transition. Fade, or crossfade, or fade with black, fade with white. Wow, this'll be interesting. Let's just do a fade, right? This does the equivalent of just adjusting the opacity is what that does, right? Uh, let's undo that, delete. Let's click right here. Let's do a, a custom motion. Let's do a pan and zoom. Uh, I don't know what's gonna happen, 180. Zoom in, pan at 180 degrees, zoom in. There we go. Here's a custom animation that uh, I think it's panning it or zooming it, and I don't know what's happening there. So <laughs> let's try to undo that. All right, that's my segue into After Effects. So let's let's take it to the next level. You guys ready? It's gonna be really fun. Oh, it's raining in Pennsylvania. Oh. Go to the next level, guys. Are you ready? So I've done this. By the way, before I even get too far, you could always um, bring, as we talk about bringing content into After Effects, uh, we could do that. Um, a lot of time, a lot of times, this stuff isn't supported. But let's just grab this. Let's paste that there. Let's expand it. There we are. Let's throw a line in here. Let's just do a line. Like so. I might even just stick with this line because this will be a little bit more exciting. But uh, you could save content from Photoshop and Illustrator and bring it into After Effects. So that's what we're gonna do. When we do that, we need to simplify all of this. So what did I do? I went ahead and outlined all of this whole shape. So it's no longer an effect. It's not gonna get all wonky on me, right? Um, Yeah, Arsalan, yeah, it gets always tricky when we, Arsalan says like, he wishes, uh, you know, you could animate things in Illustrator. I, you know, if we added it to Illustrator, we might run into the problem that we had when we added, when we added animation to Photoshop or added 3D to Photoshop. People tend to honestly kind of uh, uh, complain that it bloats the software. So the purists just want to just want to do vector logos, don't like the extra stuff. So it's always kind of like a fine balance uh, for us, right? If we want to do frame by frame animation, here we are in Animate, right? It's been a while since I've even used Animate, by by the way. Uh, let's see what we can do. Here's a macaw, just to show you an example. This is a movie clip. So again, I jumped into Adobe Animate, does things frame by frame. If I double click at this. Uh, on this bird, we could see right in here, here are the frames, right? Frame, 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 right? That we can build off of if we want to, okay? So that's within the macaw timeline, which is pretty darn cool. So this is what, say, Chris Georginis, which I don't know if he's here, he uses this, right? Does an amazing job, right? We can go back to the scene right over here, and I can sort of draw. Oh, it turns out I was drawing to begin with. Wait for it. Wait for it, there we go. You know, we do the skyline, make sure everything's. Uh, white, maybe I will get rid of this stuff. Oh, I got this all over the place.
I am just going back to my roots here. I'm trying to see if I can remember the keyboard shortcuts. Oh, yes. So anyways, everything's in one frame right here. But uh, if I run this, uh, test this, it will, of course, it should actually play. Anyways. <laughs> All right, typically how this works, you add frames right in here and then you build out animations just like you have here. Done, done. You could watch tutorials on that all day long. Can I move on? Hey, Melissa. Melissa Love from Australia. It's good to have you here. Uh, Paul Tranny, doing a crash course in all animation tools. And I want to get to After Effects. I wanted to get it 30 minutes in, right? And that's what I'm doing right now. I have this simple graphic example. Then I have something like this, which is much more complex. Okay, so this is what I'm going to make. So, success, people. All right, fantastic. Shameless self promo, but just to see this, I just I have this on super rare. Uh, again, this is just an animation I'm showing you, right? So here we have this cool animation of this stuff happening, right? Branches are moving, all sorts of cool stuff, right? This is the idea, and I'm doing it for you guys because you guys have asked, like, how do you, you know, how do you animate these sort of things, right? So how do you animate this stuff? It started with a PSD. You know, how can we take this to the next level, right? Again, I did the final frame and I was like, you know, it would be cool if uh, I opened her up and made it look a little weird. All right. So that's what this is. We could take a look. Um, yeah, anyways. I could paste this link in if you guys want to see it, but I feel like that's um, being a little, it's, it's a little too selfish. I'm just showing you an example of how to do animation. I just posted this to Instagram as well, okay? Oh, you guys like that? And this is the fun thing, by the way, like, you know, I didn't have to animate everything, right? The uh, the bokeh little burst things right here, those little sort of dust particles, that's a, just a video, right? Uh, same thing. So I have these creations. We'll go into this one. This auction's ending in like an hour. Nobody even bought it, and that's fine. But like, look, like this, that bird is uh, just an animation that I just keyed out. Everything else is using like puppet warp, and distortion tools and some effects. This hair is actually just a video. So it's a nice little marriage of video and animation, right? Just to give you an idea. But you need to know how to, um, you need to know how to um, uh, prep your files more than anything, right? So how do you prep them is probably most important. Same thing for all of these, right? Complex runs in a loop. Chances are you're an artist and you're like, I would really like to animate my work. So that's the idea. Video clip, I can open up some of these. But I, again, want to show you how to prep this file because what happens right in here, for this guy, look at all these crazy layers. Look at all this stuff, right? This is the original PSD. You could take this original PSD you can go into After Effects. You can go to File, Import, and import that. And I'll show you what happens when you bring this in. We could try to like, hey, bring everything into its own composition, right? So its own page. Uh, keep the uh, layer styles editable. Ugh. My mic is running away from me. And uh, this is what you'll get. We'll open this up. And then we have, first of all, it doesn't even look quite right. We have some issues. 
And then we like kind of have some stuff over here. Like, Paul, you didn't name your layers. There's another composition inside of this composition called skeleton. A whole additional layers. What's that all about, Paul? You didn't clean it up, did you? No, you didn't. Right, if we take a look over here, um, it ignored all of these layers, all of these clipping masks, it just ignores them, right? It takes this and it turns, uh, you know, a layer group into a composition. That's what typically happens, right? And you have to decide whether you want to do that or not. And if we twirl this down, we could take a look. Okay, this craziness got a little crazy in here too. So I don't need to pick this apart too much, but now we're inside of that layer group. And we can see, yeah, there's a, a branches folder, you know, and inside of that branches folder is all this stuff. So it gets crazy. Ah. Uh... Yeah, I got a thousand tips, Frank, and you guys probably do too. I don't claim to be like an animation expert, but you know, I had a whole career using After Effects along back when it was, I will give you five doll hairs if you could tell me what After Effects was called or who, because Adobe actually bought After Effects from another company. So what was After Effects called before it was called Adobe After Effects? Anyway. So what do you have to do? You have to consolidate all of this stuff into these layers. So these two, the skeleton with the rendered image, merge these together. Sorry, merge layers. Boom. Name it appropriately. Right, so. This is like the jaw, right? And take all this, this is literally what I had to do. So sometimes you need to be aware of that you're gonna animate it kind of beforehand, but I applied this color tint to everything, all the branches to make it look cool, right? And I said, oh geez, in order to get that same look, I have to duplicate it. Sorry, I have so many apps open right now. Things might go a little slow. And then consolidate them onto the layer. Merge layers. Oh, make sure you clip them. Bam. Clipped, clipped. Come on, buddy. Clip it. Merge layers. Call this skeleton parts. I'm not even sure what parts those are. Right? So it's a, fat, a matter of doing that. Right, consolidating all this down to something like this. Are you ready for this? I hope this is helpful to everyone. Ah. Adobe Before Effects. Before Effects, nor <laughs> me, 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 You guys are hilarious. <laughs> Flash? No. Adobe Animate is uh, is formerly known as Flash. It's not that big of a deal, but you never know. You never know when you're on Jeopardy or the new show The Chase. All right. Can we fast forward and just take a look at all the work I had to do from one to the next? Start it out like this with all this crazy stuff. Sorry. All of this craziness consolidated down. Into something that looks like this. Everything's named face, eye, shoulder, sternum, clavicle, spine, right? Cheek, leaves, and we can turn these off and see. Okay, okay, I see what's, I see what's happening here. Boom, boom, boom. So we're gonna animate this from scratch, basically, from this file. So consolidate everything to layers. By the way, you're wondering, Alyssa, and I should have a lot like this, you could have a clavicle, and this could be a smart object. So make these smart objects, that's totally fine. And you'll see those three, those three shoulder, sternum, clavicle come through 
um, in a second. Uh, just go Kosa. Uh, so yes. Uh, and by the way, uh, Tim probably has Google, which is why he knows that. No offense. You could have known that, but, uh, n next question is what does Kosa stand for? Try that on for size. Yes, it was called Kosa After Effects, and you actually got a dongle, a little dongle that attached to your keyboard, to your computer, that was the hardware key for Kosa After Effects. So you needed that dongle, that hardware key for After Effects to work. Okay, so this is all done. It's called Petrified. I have everything broken out onto its own separate layers. Boom, boom, boom. And let's have some fun, everybody. We're gonna have some fun now. You ready? I feel that coffee, that caffeine just pulsing through my veins like, like water isn't pulsing through this guy's branches. Composition is what I'm going to do, right? Editable layer styles. And uh, click OK. Double clicking on that. And there it is. And here's everything. Shoop. Muriel, let me know if you have questions. Melissa Love, Roz, hello, Arsalan. So that's how I reduce, that's how I personally reduce it down. Let's move my big head out of the way. Whoa. And uh, we can see everything is nice and neatly named. Although I have like five layers of leaves, but this is great. Now I can go through and I can say, okay, the face, as I take a look, I can see the face right there. Boom, boom. I could have this whole character kind of rise up from the bottom if I want to. I can do a thousand things and maybe we will. So that being said, let's just delete that one. Let's duplicate this one. There we go. We'll have a uh, animate up from bottom or something. So we'll just do this. We'll take this one and uh, we can take these individual elements and animate them up. So that sounds like a good idea, like we were doing before, right? Like it's growing out of the ground. We'll twirl all this down. Uh, Kai's in the house as well. I'm over on Behance, yes, uh, uh, behance.net forward slash Adobe Live. And sure enough, just like in Photoshop that I showed you, we have all these properties and a thousand more things, right? So I can take uh, position, for instance, right? Remember, this is just the face. And uh, I could say over the course of two seconds, have it rise up from the bottom. So you want to click the stopwatch and it adds this keyframe. So when you're, do, when you're animating an illustration or a design, you kind of build the final piece and you want to animate to it. So you kind of scroll in, you add your keyframes, and then you animate everything out. So from there, there's the position. You could do scale, you could do rotation. I'll often click multiples of these, and sometimes I don't end up using the rotation, and I just delete it later. It doesn't hurt really having it there. So right down here, we'll take uh, the face. We'll move this down like that. And then when we click play, we could see it kind of move into place, All right? So that's what's happening. We could, let's just get, let's just have some fun, everyone. Let's take everything. Hit P for position. Bring up the position for everything. Click on that stopwatch for everything. What does it do? It adds a keyframe two seconds in for everything. Scrub once back to zero, zero. And then let's just like take everything and move it down. Zoop. Move it all down like that. This actually might even be a cooler animation than I made and that I posted. But now we have everything rising up from the bottom. Let's make it larger. Everything is like rising up, right? That's the idea. 
which works out okay, but we want everything to go at a different rate, right? So this, I can start to stagger this content and have some fun with it. So let's just like have fun. Again, this was in Photoshop two seconds ago. Best thing that you could do in here is add easing. So notice how it's actually a linear, it goes linear in that the motion has a consistent pace from start to end, which is not sexy. Is that okay that I say that? It's boring. Take all these keyframes, right click on them, and rather than having it just so linear and boring, like the same speed the whole time, go right over here, just do this. Right click, keyframe assistant, do a little easy ease. I know it all it makes everybody think of easy E. I get it. Go to your easy E, add your easy E. I wish there was a little icon of them. But uh, that's going to make it slow down as it reaches the top. So it actually changes the motion. See? It's so subtle, but it's just going to help out your animation that much more. But from here, I would start to stagger this stuff. Right? So let's, let's take... Let's do this. Let's actually take all of these. Let's move everything down. And let's just start to stagger this stuff out. Let's just do this. We're just having fun. It might look good, it might not, but the fact that everything's on its own layer makes it awesome and unique, right? Now we'll go ahead and hit play. And that's kind of doing us some more favors. And then we could just tweak the length of things like that. Everything's kind of slowly growing up from the bottom. The skull, let's see. Not the face. A lot of times I'll turn off everything. And maybe you guys might know this. I know there's plenty of smart people out there. What's the keyframe all is, there's no shortcut keyframe to add it to everything. You just, if you select all the frames, if you select the layer and then just, if you select say five layers, then just click this little button and it'll add a keyframe to all your selected layers. The shortcut key for bringing up the properties is gonna vary. So, Command A, I can hit P for position, uh, T for opacity, R for rotation, uh, s let's see, what else we got? S for scale, those are the ones I typically use, right? But now we can see everything kind of come up. So I can scale things up, which is fun. You, then once you add your keyframes, you could hit U. U is your Uber key. Oops. There we go. U brings up all your keyframes. It doesn't care if it's opacity, scale, any of that stuff. It brings up everything, right? The tilde key, I know I'm throwing a lot at you. The tilde will like bring this up full, any of your selected panels up full screen because the things might get complex. But anyways, let's just like have some fun now. Let's have some fun, folks. Twirl everything back down. Turn off a lot of this stuff. I want to find that original. Oh yeah, this skeleton is the thing that needs to come in last. So it's going to go the slowest because that's just going to look better what is it gonna be oh it's a skull what oh that's crazy oh yeah kai brings up a good question kai is like can you blur the background and bring it into focus heck yeah heck yeah you can so anyways we have this going on i will do that Let's go up uh, right here. Now let's just do some fun things, right? Let's do some things that we know that we have in, uh, say, Photoshop. Let's take, for instance, I got these branches. Let's take this branch and let's just kind of turn off this other stuff so we can kind of see it. We'll take this one branch and we want to animate this one branch. right here. We want to animate this one branch. 
and we want it to kind of move around. So if I move the position, this isn't sexy. Yeah, I could rotate it and things, you know, but it's like not doing us any favors. It's not that great. So this is what I want to do is I want to uh, use Puppet Warp on this. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, one thing I like to do, by the way, especially when your animations get really big, uh, it might be a setting actually on file import. Uh, let me just try this. Oh man, I should have brought everything in as composition retain layer sizes. That's my bad. This will keep the, your sizes. It made everything the composition size, just so you know. Nonetheless, here we go, branch. What do we want? We want to use Puppet Warp just like we have in Photoshop. Use this all the time in here, right? We have this branch right here. We'll go to uh, Puppet Warp right here, and then we can warp it, you know, which I do all the time. It's like, oh, if you could only do this in After Effects, Heck yeah, you can. After Effects. Right up here, this little pin tool. Puppet Position Pin Tool. I don't know why it has such a long name. <laughs> but now we can go ahead and click, and click, and then click, and then maybe click over here, and then maybe over here. And what I've done is I've added all these pins. Right, these are all the little pins that I've just added. So now I can move it. So two seconds down the line, let's adjust that branch. Let's move this one over here. Let's stretch this one up, right? We'll maybe keep that one there. We'll scroll down a little bit further. We'll kind of move this over, move this back, right? We're just having fun. Like this is just a blast, huh? Move this down, maybe it goes back over here, right? And we can start to see that line being built, right? Move that up. Move this down, you get the idea. I want it to end up back where it was originally. So I could take these keyframes, copy them, and then paste them down here. All right, scroll down. Pay. Oops. Sorry about that. Uh, these guys copy, paste. There we go. So now they end up back where they were in the beginning. But now that's what's happening. It's going to animate up. And we'll wait. We'll actually take this and we'll move this. We'll wait for everything to animate in. And this will maybe be one of the last things to come in. But let's just take a look at it. Nah, I don't like that. There we go. So everything slides in, and then that branch is now moving. Cool. Yeah, sure, Kai. Happy to go to Las Vegas. That'd be awesome. Uh, cool. Does that make sense? Is it? Is it easy? Yeah, it's pretty easy. Now let's do what Kai mentioned which is sort of like blur out the background and do some fun things there. How many hours did I spend on this? It probably took me like two days. <laughs> I don't know, man, that's a tough question. It took me a couple days. So that slides up like that. Um, so yeah, does that make sense? Zoop. We could reverse animations. We could do so many things. I have about five minutes. Um, let me do something that's gonna save you some time. So just, oh yeah, by the way, if I decide I don't like the look of something, 
I could always edit it back in Photoshop. How do you have to do that? Do you have to launch it? Do you have to like save it? Do you have to re-import it? Do all that stuff? No. You literally go out. Here's your petrified. Here's the blue. Let's change the blue to a green just for kicks, right? So we can, it, you could do it this way. Reveal in Finder. This is what I, I just wanted to make sure I have the right file. So this is the file we've been working with. Right, let's undo that, that portion. Let's just make this change that we see. We will take this um, sort of blue back there and we're just gonna hue shift just so we can see a difference. Right, we're gonna make this maybe more, um, doesn't matter more gold, right? So that's what I did. I did the edit in Photoshop, save the file. You don't have to reload it or anything. When you come back in here, it automatically reloads as you can see. So again, super easy to do, right? Make your changes, they will load back up uh, and then you'll be well on your way. If you decide you wanna blur the background even more, we can do that. Go down to the forest, right? Here's the forest, right? There's everything. Oh, and by the way, look at this. Can we just say this is awesome? This is awesome. Look at this, look at this everybody. You used to use in Photoshop, look. Oh, overlay, sorry. There's my overlay blend mode, which I use all the time. So your blend modes come through and we could of course change that. So that original blue or whatever, we could change that to hard light and you could see it obviously change. So anyways, that's done. We'll select forest. We want it blurry. We'll go to effects and presets. We'll type in blur, right? Just do that. Uh, blurs and sharpens. I would just probably do a, um, look at how many blurs there are, by the way. You could always X out of that. Uh, 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 uh. I usually use GAU, Gaussian blur. Here we go. This is what I wanted, Gaussian blur. Taking that, we're familiar with that with Photoshop. Drop that on our layer, boom, there it is. Gaussian blur applied right here. We could see, not only is it right down there. Ah, I'm, not, I'm gonna remove that. This is what I'm gonna do, because there's other things on my, uh, on my uh, workspace within this composition. Take this Gaussian blur and drop it on the layer. It's gonna, be more effective. Boom, there it is. So we can see the effect controls for the forest in the background. Now what I can do is I can twirl this down. I can see there's my Gaussian blur. We'll add a keyframe, boom, at zero, zero. So we're gonna make sure that it starts out. Actually, let's start out sharp. And then as everything comes up, we're going to blur it out more. So we'll go to forest. We're gonna take the blurriness, crank that up a lot. And there we have that background blur out to focus more on our guy, okay? Yeah, does that make sense? Down to my last minute, what do you do next? You export it out. I just add it to Adobe Media Encoder. So do that. That way you can just kind of render out. You can continue to work in After Effects or Photoshop or wherever. Have some fun, uh, but render it out um, at whatever size you want. And those parts are pretty straightforward, okay? Uh, one thing I didn't get to is I would typically work with masking. Um, I work, I would work with multiple compositions too. So, um, there might be a chance where I'll like, I'll take this petrified animate up from the bottom. We can make a new composition from that selection. Now I have that, all that, but there's my rendering settings, by the way. Uh, so that's what I'll sometimes do is add more, uh, fun color splashes and things. Um, uh, so you'll see that a lot, nested compositions. In this case, light leak. Yeah, let's drop that in there. A little light, light leak action. Boom, boom, rotate it 90 degrees, stretch it out a little bit, change this to lighten, right? And now we have these 
light leaks over the top, which is a little intense, that I would just adjust accordingly. But you guys get the idea. Uh, we have T. White, one only, Terry White up next. So stay tuned for him. It's going to be awesome. And thank you guys for hanging out with me. Really appreciate you. And I'll see you for the Photoshop Masterclass. We're going to do 3D. Thanks so much, everybody.